that it's going up by tells you what you're multiplying by, not what you're adding. So the fact that it's going up by three each time means you have three in, and then you go, okay, this is the first figure, then it only has one, uh, so I need to subtract two to make that work, okay? Uh, all right, number two was a huge struggle um, because yeah. we tricked you. Um, it's an integer even if it's written in an unfamiliar form, okay? Integers are all whole numbers, positive or negative or zero. So this is an integer and that's an integer. That one, those two are pretty simple. 121 is also an integer. So what is the square root of nine? Three. Three, which is an integer. And what is uh, 18 divided by six? Negative three. Negative three or you know, whatever, which is an integer. So there's actually five of them in there that are integers, not just uh, three. Most of you got some of them right and then some of you wrong, so I only took off a half of a point on those, okay? Uh, then number three, uh, we multiply both of things in the parentheses by two, so that's an example of the distributive property. Number four, since the order has changed, since you went from three plus pi to pi plus th three, that's an example of the commutative property. Uh, number six, or number five, the sum of g and the quotient of three and h. Quotient means divide, so I'm gonna go three divided by h, and then I'm gonna add g onto that, or of course, since addition is uh, commutative, you could write that the other way around and it'll work out to be the same, okay? And some people use the division symbol, that's fine too, okay? Uh, okay, number six, six times the difference of x and 22. So difference implies subtraction. And then since we're multiplying the entire difference by six, we need parentheses uh, in there to show that, okay? Uh, okay, then this one right here, I'm gonna plug in two for all the x's. So 12 times two is 24, minus nine times two minus one. Uh, then I have to do order of operations. So inside parentheses is uh, one. So it's 24 minus nine times one, and that works out to be uh, 15, because I do my multiplication first. And then for number eight, I plug in uh, negative two for all of the t's. So I'm gonna go negative two times two times negative two, plus three uh, divided by negative two plus uh, six. And so this is one, like I said, when I was correcting them, I noticed that on this form and I thought, you know, that's a little bit trickier than the equivalent one on the other quiz, so uh, maybe they aren't the same. Um, anyway, if I keep working this out, if I do inside the parentheses first, I get negative two times negative four plus three divided by four, and then negative four plus three is negative one. And negative two times negative one is two, and that reduces to uh, one half. Please always reduce all of your fractions whenever possible, okay? Um, so that was a little bit uh, tricky, all right? Uh, okay, then writing it says, how can you use a graph to find a pattern? Honestly, if you just like wrote down some words, I mean, what do you, I don't even know, what do you look at the graph and some people wrote some fun stuff about, you know, yeah, some people were like, you can tell if it's going up or down or, you know, whatever, I don't know. Um, so whatever, it's all good. Uh, and then um, this one was a tough one. What is another name for an additive inverse? You have to think your way through this. You have to say, additive inverse is a number that I add to another number to make it equal to zero. So for example, four plus what is equal to zero? Negative, Negative four. four. What's another word for negative four relative to four? Yeah, that's also called the opposite, okay? So you could have uh, written, that's what we're looking for there, okay? Uh, all right, hang on a sec. That um, we kind of want to try and do this in alphabetical order if we can. So I got a lot of seven X's plus Y. Nice job, okay? Uh, and then number six, eight more than, that means uh, addition. So plus eight, and then quotient means division. So the quotient of t and two, and again, you, just like on the other version, you could do that the other way around and everything would be fine, okay? Okay, number seven, we gotta evaluate this one also. This time we're plugging in uh, eight. So if I put eight into here, two times eight is 16. Eight minus four is four. Uh, I do my multiplication first. So six times four is 24, add those together and I get 40. 
So that's pretty similar to the one on the other quiz. But then this one was, a, this is a lot easier than the one where you got one half. So that's, I think, was a little bit cheap on my part. You put a negative four, and then um, inside the parentheses is negative five. Do your multiplication first, and you get a final answer of negative 14, okay? Uh, all right, then this one says, give an example of a number that is an irrational number. Uh, if this was family feud, the number one answer would be pi. pi. Most people put down pi. That's the irrational number that we all know and love the best. Uh, another good easy example uh, that was given in your textbook when we went over this was uh, the square root of 2, okay? Um, all right, and then there was one more that I stole from here. What's the difference between simplifying an expression and evaluating an expression? Um, simplifying, I was kind of looking for like you to say something about combining like terms. Um, and then evaluating an expression is something to do with substituting a value in there. Something like that. Okay. All right, any questions about either one of these? Okay. Um, so let's uh, keep learning math. Yes. problem here where we were trying to figure out what the uh, weights of the different objects would be. Um, and we were trying to make a connection between that and uh, solving equations. And again, the idea here was uh, Garrett and I had a pretty in-depth conversation yesterday about uh, adding the same thing to both sides of the equation and the idea of uh, balance and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you um, recognize that uh, concept, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, practice some of these. And we're starting now with a tough one. So uh, we want to figure out what is the solution of x plus 4 equals negative 12. So this is just kind of like first year algebra, one step equation. Uh, what do I have to do to get rid of the 4, to get the x by itself? Subtract 4. Yeah, so this is, no, this is just notes. But then I'm going to switch on you in a second. Yeah, you subtract 4 from both sides, so these 4s cancel. And then negative 12 minus 4 is negative 4 plus negative 4 again. So you're adding two negatives, and you get with negative 16. Okay? So whether you go negative 12 minus 4 or whether you go negative 12 plus negative 4, either way you should come up with uh, negative 16. Piece of cake, right? All right, so uh, very quickly then, uh, this one you don't have to write down, just turn to your elbow partner, the person sitting next to you, and will you uh, agree what the solution to 12b equals 18 is? <laughs> you can tell me. What is the 12 doing to the thing? What's the opposite of multiply? So you go to divide both sides by 12. So what is 18 divided by 12? What's the remainder of the Simple uh, one step equations. Um, let's uh, do some multi step equations. So, what would I do first in the process of solving this? Thank you. Okay, good. I have to distribute the three. So, the stuff on the left stays the same. And then I distribute the three, remember, to both of the terms inside the parentheses. So, three times y is 3y. Three 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 y. And then I also have to go to three times negative 3, and that will give you negative 9. Negative nine. Okay. 
Uh, and then at this point, all you have to do is you have to remember that math is very racist. Um, they always want, you know, segregation. The numbers and the letters can't be on the same side together, okay? I used to teach this like, uh, as sort of like gang warfare kind of thing. The, the letters and the numbers are fighting each other. Um, because they live on opposite side of the railroad tracks. You put in some extra equal signs and you get some railroad track, right? Okay. But apparently that's, you know, not really the best way to do that. Um, so what you have to decide, the fun part about this is that there are four, count them, four, count them, one, two, three, four, four steps that you can take in solving this equation that are all correct, okay? For my money, as a math teacher, I like to start by getting the numbers on the left, okay? But if you want, you could get the numbers over here on the right, or you could mess with the variables or whatever you want, okay? So how can I get all of the numbers over onto the right? Add 27. Add 27. <laughs> okay, what did I do? You said that was the left, and then you said that oh, was the right, and then I'm you said that right. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I meant to say get all the numbers on the right. I'm facing you guys, so that's my left, and I got that's my excuse. Now I'm one of those guys that doesn't come like right away. Like I can't. I have to sort of, you know, you know, that's it. Um, okay. So those cancel. So then I have six y equals three y. What's uh, negative nine plus twenty seven? Eighteen. Okay, and now that the letters have moved in to the east side of the tracks, the, the, I mean, the, the numbers did, the letters have to get out of town. Yeah, they got to get to their own side or they're going to, you know, there's a bad thing going to happen. So these guys are going to leave and go over here, but when they go across the tracks, they're like switching gangs, so they're switching signs. So this used to be a positive three y. Now it's a negative three y. Okay. I don't know. That's just you know. It works for eighth grade. Um, okay. So six y minus three y's is bless you. How many y's do I have left? Three y's. Because there's a fight, right? There's a, there's a fight. Yeah, they fight and uh, right, and they cancel each other out. And so when that settles, there's only three y's that are left over there. Okay. Uh, and then so how? So three y equals eighteen. Uh, and then all, yes. You divide three both sides. Good. Divide both sides by three, and so y equals six. Okay. So slightly more complex than the first couple, but not too bad. Remember, in uh, first year algebra, you spent like an entire day on adding and subtracting to both sides to solve the equation. Then you spent an entire day on multiplying or dividing, and then you spent an entire day on parentheses. But this is advanced algebra, uh, so we're going a little bit uh, faster, okay? Um, all right, so for this one, since it is a little bit more complex, I would like you to write this out on the same piece of paper that you figured out the mobile problem from yesterday, okay? Remember? So put this on that piece of paper, work together with the person sitting next to you or others at your table. Um, to figure out what the answer to this is, make sure you guys both come up with the same solution. Okay, let me get you back up here. Um, so first step was to distribute the three, and then also distribute the negative two. Uh -huh. uh, and then you notice that over here, this six x and this negative six x both cancel. And so if I combine these like terms here, that gives me negative 11 equals 11 x. And then uh, what's my last step? Yeah. Divide, both sides. Divide both sides by 11, so you get a final answer of x equals negative 1, okay? Which is what most of you ended up with uh, in the end, okay? Uh, all right, let's uh, do a word problem here. Wait, wait. Oh, where are you from? Denmark? Oh, so close. This is a problem taking place in Brussels, Belgium, so almost. Your neighboring country? On your borders? Uh, is there Belgium? No? Uh, oh, right. Well, never mind. What do I want? I don't know. I love to my right. How am I supposed to know where Belgium is? Uh, okay. Um, you're missing out. May I? Because I didn't cut and paste this. Haley? Haley? You're missing out. In your book is this beautiful picture of a uh, flower carpet. Okay? 
So if you want to see what they're talking about, I don't know if this is some sort of uh, tradition that they have, but it says flower carpets incorporate hundreds of thousands of brightly colored flowers as well as grass, tree, bark, and sometimes fountains to form intricate designs and motifs. The flower carpet shown here from the Grand Place in Brussels, Belgium, has a perimeter of 200 meters. What are the dimensions of the flower carpet? And I really should have uh, copied down the picture because I feel like there's some information in the picture that I need to solve this problem. Is there a number in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So one of the sides is X and one of the sides is 3X. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right, so perimeter means what? Outside. Outside, yeah, okay, good. So what is the perimeter of this in terms of X? 200. It's 200 meters. And what does that equal? Uh, X. I, got, I heard 4X. I've got 4X's right here, but then I need these two sides also, right? Yeah, so all together it's going to be uh, 8X, okay? Um, because if this side is X, then this side is also X. And if this is 3x, then that's 3x. So if I add those up all the way around, I have a total of 8x's, OK? Uh, so then how do I uh, solve that? Divide. Uh, divide both sides by 8. You get 25. You get 25, OK, thank you. So x equals 25. Now, unfortunately, that's not what the question asked for. The question said, what is what are the dimensions of the flower carpet? So this side is how long? Five. 25, because we figured out that x equals 25. This side is how long? 75. 75. So the dimensions of the flower carpet would be 25 meters by 75 meters, OK? All right, so that's uh, a little bit of algebra in action. Uh, OK, then sometimes when you're going along, minding your own business, doing your math, solving equations, weird things happen. Okay, uh, and so let's talk about those, um, what those options are right here. Um, so this says, is the equation always, sometimes, or never true? Yeah. So let's just do what we're supposed to do and combine like terms to start with. What like terms can I combine on the left side of the equation? The 11. The 11 and the minus 7. Okay, so those combine to make 4. four. So this is going to be 4 plus 3x over here. What can I combine over here? 6x and the negative. So 6x and the minus 3x all together make 3x's three 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 plus, uh, plus 5. Good. All right, so now I combine my like terms on both sides. Now I'm going to start moving things around so I can get all the numbers on one side and the variables uh, on the other. So which one do you want to do first? The x's. The x's. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And then uh, something wild and wonderful happens. Since they both had three x's, they both cancel, and I get four equals five. Okay, yes? Uh, once you got it simplified, can you just say that it would never equal? Because you can see that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. So um, what Caden is doing here is he's going, if I take three times the number plus four, he knows that's never going to equal three times the number plus five, right? So he doesn't even have to do the algebra from there. He knows they're never going to be the same. Um, I'm a teacher, so I have to just like keep talking and talking and talking because you know that's what we do. Um, so did all this unnecessary work. Does four ever equal five? No. And so that means that this uh, is never true. Four never equals five. Okay. Or we could have a situation like this. What do I do first uh, to solve this one? Combine the like terms. So what like terms can I combine on the left? X's. The, yeah, the 6x and the 2x. So 6x minus 2x is 4x. And then I still have that plus 5. What can I combine on the right-hand side? 4x. Right, the 4 and the 1. So the 4x stays the same, and then 4 plus 1 is also 5. And so 4 times the number plus 5, 4 times the number plus 5, sometimes, always, never. Always. Because you're doing the same thing to both sides. Both sides of the equation are identical. So this thing will always be true. OK? OK, uh, on your piece of paper, will you try two of these on your own? <laughs>
Uh, for some of you, like uh, Kagan, who sort of can see the end of the story very quickly, this will be a quick problem, probably. Um, but take your time, make sure you get it right. Uh, were you guys able to get an answer for A? Yeah. What'd you get? Uh, well, not true. Not true. How okay. come? Because, like, they don't come out the same. Uh, what did you get on the left? <laughs> um, I got a two. a two. Well, you want me to, like, bring it down? Yeah, I want you to bring oh, it down. Oh, okay, so 7x uh, minus 4x is 3x. Uh-huh, whoops. <coughs> okay. And then it's going to be plus 6. And then I went to the right side, and I went 12 minus 8 is 4. Okay. Plus, plus 3x. Okay. okay. And then I went minus 4 to the left side. Oh, okay. And then uh, 2 plus 3x. And then um, I the, no, I minus 3x from the left side and 1 was to the right, and that was 0. Okay. And then you ended up with uh, 2 equals 0, which is never true. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, very nicely done. Um, so this one is a never. How about uh, B? Everybody got B? Okay, you're on a roll. Go for it. Um, so, three x, it's going to be 3x. Then 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12. Okay. Then 2 times 2x is going to be 4x. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And then 2 times 6, negative 6, negative 12. Okay. Plus x. And then I went back over the west side and... 2x plus 3x is 5x, and then 4x, 4x plus is 5x. Awesome. And you just can tell from there. Okay, and then you can tell from there that they're identical, so that means it is uh, always going to be true. Okay, could be the smartest man alive right there. So thank you. Ever, uh, he's not <laughs> uh, He's your guy. Okay. Uh, all right, and then the last thing that's in here is sometimes we have the uh, joy of working with equations where there's two variables in there, and you're going to solve for a variable, but you're going to have a variable in the answer, okay? So, for example, um, we have Nikolai here, and in uh, Denmark, they use Celsius for their temperature, and here we use Fahrenheit. So if you're hanging out with them after school and you're like, so what's it like in your town? Is it very hot there in the summer? And he says, oh yes, it gets up to 35 degrees. And you're like, what? That's not hot. And you're like, oh wait, that's Celsius. So now you gotta figure out what that would be in Fahrenheit. So you know this equation right here. You would never like get on your phone and just like Google and just figure it out. You would go and you look this up and you say, okay, I've got this equation that relates Celsius to Fahrenheit, but I wanna know what Fahrenheit is to Celsius. I wanna take his Celsius temperature and change it into uh, Fahrenheit. So to do that, I have to solve for F, okay? So, what would you do first? Yeah. Okay, what I would do first, there's an impulse maybe to distribute the 5 ninths, but 5 ninths and 32 are not very good friends. So I would start by multiplying both sides by 9 fifths. Okay? And then that gets this thing to cancel, and then I don't have to worry about it at all. So then over here I have 9 fifths times Celsius equals Fahrenheit minus 32. Now getting the Fahrenheit by itself is a very simple process. What do I do to get rid of the minus 32? Add, add. add 32 to both sides. So that gives me a final answer that uh, Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths times Celsius plus 32. And so now we can go, okay, he said it gets up to 35 degrees in the summer, and he said that's very hot. Let's see uh, what that translates to for us. So if I put a 35 in there, uh, 5 goes into 35 seven times, and then that is uh, 63 plus 32, and that works out to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So you go, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty hot. Okay? We get like two of those days the entire year. 
Okay, so those are called literal equations, and that's when you're solving for a, a variable in terms of another variable. You don't get a single answer or a single number as your uh, answer. All right. Okay, good enough for me. Uh,